Okay, so our project at the moment, it um, works. However, the big problem with it is that every time, if you do go through the whole process of actually putting it on your device, it does ask for the name and such, and it accepts it, and it puts the name into it, just like you would expect. So on the virtual device or the real device, if you, if you run it, you'll see it works, but it, it's not permanent. If I exit the app and, you know, force quit the app, because there's a difference between just exiting the app and coming back to it, it's still in memory. But let's say the app was closed because it's a day later, and you come back, the app will no longer uh, remember the name that you put into it, because we're using the basic... Uh, variables, basic JavaScript variables. We said here, var, username. We created a variable. It's a container, but v variables, plain old JavaScript variables, are, are impermanent. We need to deal with something more permanent. In a sense, we have sort of uh, something that would be that you could think of them as cookies. We can save more permanent data, kind of like a cookie, but it's more like a, a variable 2.0, sort of. It's called local storage. So just as a little side tour, detour, I'm going to open my web browser, and I'm going to go over to w3schools.com. Remember that website from last month? w3schools.com is one of many websites out there that will teach you a variety of web languages like HTML. And we're going to deal with local storage, which is an HTML5 construct. It's, it's, newer, uh, it's newer HTML code, meaning it doesn't work on older browsers and such. But again, we're not targeting old web browsers. We're targeting modern mobile devices. So here under W3Schools, you should have search at the top right. You can search, and we'll search for local storage. One word. Local storage. There's a search box at the top right. Um, I guess here on these results, you should see uh, HTML5 web storage. That's the main article there. HTML5 web storage. HTML local storage, better than cookies. What is this? With local storage, web apps can store data locally within the, the user's browser. Before HTML5, app data had to be stored in cookies, including included in every server request. Local storage is more secure, and large amounts of data can be stored locally without affecting website performance. Unlike cookies, the storage limit is far greater, at least 5 megabytes, and information is never transferred to the server. So this is compatible with a variety of uh, browsers if you're targeting a plain old web app, but we're targeting Android, iOS, Windows Phone, etc. It works there just fine too. And so what we've got HTML5 is uh, our objects like JavaScript window.local storage and window.session storage. Question. So that's um, straight to the device. Exactly. <coughs> exactly. If someone were to visit your website in their web browser, it would store the cookie to the web browser. But we're running our apps, our web apps, as a hybrid app, so it's going to store the data to the device. At the moment, it'll save permanent data to the device. Later on, we'll talk more complex databases and such, and saving it to a server and all of that. But at the moment, all that we really need is to save very basically the name to the device. And so we've got the ways to do that are session storage and local storage. Session storage really you don't need it usually because it's pretty much like the plain old variable in that it disappears when your session is done. It disappears when you close your web browser. It disappears when you force quit the app. It's just for the session. For the session that you've got the app open, store this data, which is just a variable. Although there are other things about it like security. So what we want is what we call local storage. Stores data with no expiration date. There's a little bit of a sanity check there to make sure is local storage available to use in our project. 
we have in an if-else statement. We haven't really talked about those yet. We'll talk about them much more when we get complex. But this is a way for us to check is something true or not. Basically, we're checking here if we are able, if we are not <coughs> able to use local storage, do something about that. Or else, yes, we are able to use local storage, so else do we or backwards. If we code for local storage, no web storage. So if either yes, either no, basically an if-else statement. We'll, get, we'll actually use those a little later to make decisions. What if we're thinking about it in this terms? What if we're asking for the person to type in their first name, but then they type in a number? That's the wrong kind of input. So we have to check, do we have the proper input? We have to do all of that stuff that is done for us and take it for granted when we use apps, when we use websites, and it just works. If it's asking for a phone number and we put one, two, three, dash, four, five, six, seven, internally it has to strip away that dash because the database doesn't accept the dashes. The database only accepts numbers. So we have all of these things that we need to do to make sure is, are things working right. We have to check our logic. Anyway, this is to check, is local storage available on your device? And basically, look at this. As long as you've got Google version 4, you've got it, Google Chrome. Right now, it's on like version 40. Internet Explorer, it's on version 11 at the moment. And Firefox, it's also on version like 40. Yeah. And, and Safari, it's on version 6 or 7 or something. And, and, Chrome, and Opera is also. So this works. Not for the oldest browsers, but who cares? We're not targeting Internet Explorer 7. We're not targeting Chrome 3. It's not, you know, six years ago anymore. We're targeting the latest devices, so I'm not really going to bother with, is local storage available? It is. For modern devices, it's the future. It works. Forget the past. The way it actually works, it can be done two different ways. Local storage, so you have to write the command, basically. Local storage dot set item, the name of the cookie, the name of the variable, comma, what you're putting into it. And that could be a number, a string, boolean, etc. So this has the syntax of JavaScript. Even though it's HTML5, it's JavaScript. It's just HTML is like a name for like a bunch of technologies all lumped together. This is JavaScript. We have the local storage object with the set item method two parameters to that, the name of the variable, slash cookie, what we put into it. And then we've got to take the data out of it to read what's in it. We have right here, local storage dot get item. Get me what's stored inside the item named last name. Up here, let's set an item. Let's create a local storage object. Let's create a cookie called local last name and let's put Smith into it and over here let's retrieve it and then in this case it's also showing it on screen there's that document docket element by ID result dot inner HTML that's the same as dot HTML yeah so just get that put it in that div that's that there set item get item <coughs> but actually there's another way to do it here local storage dot the name of your object equals the value. Both of these are equivalent. This method right here to store, this method right here to store. See the difference? Local storage dot set item and the name of the cookie and the value. Or local storage the name of the cookie and the value. We're gonna do it this way. It's so much more straightforward. They're equivalent. Local storage object specifically the name of my cookie that I can make up to be called anything equals whatever I want to put into it. And to retrieve it, it's also very simple. Local storage dot the name of the cookie. The end. We don't need get. We don't need get item or yeah, get item. Yes. So if you uh, restart your your mobile device, you lose that? If you lose your mobile device, we still haven't gotten to the point where this is more permanent in that it's saved to the cloud, because that's how you have true permanence in that this data is also saved elsewhere to some 
server online. And then when you lose your device and get another one back and log in again and retrieve it, it's waiting for you. That is much more complex for us at the moment, but that would require server infrastructure. How about if you turn off your device? If you turn off your device, it's still there. Okay. Because local storage saves it you know, internally into the guts of your device. It won't lose it there. But if you go from device to device or you have to reset your device completely, then it'll be lost. So this is what we're going to use instead. Instead of plain old VAR, instead of plain old variable, we're going to use local storage. Yes. Session storage. If it's multi-page, multi-pages, mm -hmm. meaning it can be used in different pages. The variable is only on this page. No, variable can still be used on multiple pages. We are seeing this here. We're seeing that this variable is used on the home page, on the about page, on the contact page, on the art page. But is the single page application? Oh, the, yes, the same HTML file. Yes, this... Um, if it's multi, you know, multi If it's multi-file, um, that, um, even with local storage, is and not I mean, possible. No, but even local storage, even session storage, from what the documentation says here, this it, it, the it's got it's per origin basically. It's what created it is the thing that can access it. So if index file created it, session storage or local storage, <coughs> only index file can access it, not contact HTML file. Question. So it's all within the same app. Within the same what? within the same app. Our project here is uh, an SPA, single page app, so all of our screens are still just in the index file. So anywhere in our app there, it can access that local storage object. So if you have a multi-HTML, multi-file you know, app, mm -hmm. you could access it from any app, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, any file, or it has to be just no, that was the question. That was the question earlier here. If it is in multiple files, from what I understand here, no. But we then have other things that we can work with, such as actually saving stuff directly to the memory card, for example. This is one way to save data. For our purposes at this point, it works fine. But for if we do have data that we need to open in multiple files, it might be better to use the Cordova file plugin that will actually save data to the memory card that can be accessed elsewhere, which might not be as secure. Yes? Is there a scope? Is this considered both of scope? Yes, um, because it's attached, um, because the modern browsers understand this, whereas the older ones don't, they do treat it as, as global scope within our, anywhere within our JavaScript or HTML. Um, so okay. examples here, session, we're not going to use session, we're going to use local storage. So um, we need to rewrite our code a little bit. Let's go back to our JavaScript file. The HTML will stay the same, but now the JavaScript file, but now the JavaScript file needs to change a little here. So here's how it's going to change. I'm going to comment out line 65, just double slash right there to comment it. I may still want to use this method in another way at some other point. I want to comment it out and copy it to the next line where I will change it. You can remember, you can add comment, single line comment, and you can give yourself another comment here that says, this is the old way. Var is not permanent. Next line, I made an exact copy because then I'm going to change it. I'm not going to use var username anymore. I'm going to change that to say local storage capital S dot username. That's it. That creates the local storage object called username that is saving a more permanent variable, a more permanent cookie directly to your device. Done, right? Nope. What am I missing? This sets it, we haven't retrieved it. So that we need to change as well. And simply, again, because we're using the shorthand, like that. 
We don't have to do set item and get item. This is equivalent. We're going to use local storage. What's it called? What do we fill it with? The end. We're going to retrieve it. Local storage, what's it called? The end. If you save it and run it, write less, do more. Write less, do more. I like <laughs> if you save it and run it, it should still work the same. We're still not quite there yet, but save it and run it. It should still work the same. It should still work the same as before, and then we've got a, lo a little bit of other polish to do. We'll try that either in the browser or in the device. So local storage, this is a very basic way to save data more permanently. This We can create as many of these as we want. Each of these has uh, at least five megabytes of storage. A classic cookie had like, uh, I don't know, like 20 kilobytes of space or less. A very small amount of data, the classic cookies. A variable, a plain old JavaScript variable, that has a huge amount of space as well basically the size of your file structure. But variables are impermanent. So somewhere in the middle here, we've got local storage, which is HTML5, technically JavaScript. And uh, we we're able to save at least 5 megabytes. Some uh, browsers or some uh, file systems and such um, let you save more than 5, less than, uh, you know, up to 100. Some is unlimited, some as much as your device. That varies, but really it's not the best way to save lots of complex data, but for us to simply ask for a name. Um, oops. Let's see, what are we missing here? Oops, it went blank. Okay, let's see the console. What's the console saying? Uncut reference error, username is not defined. <laughs> All right, so there is an error. That's good. Oh, it's not defined. Username is not defined. Kodika file line 67. Let's see. Oh, here's why. Pretty dumb, pretty dumb error. Console log is trying to display the name that we captured and we forgot to put local storage.username. Oh. When one thing breaks, everything breaks. So, console log, I don't know what username is. <laughs> We're debugging it live, yes. There we go. Console log should show local storage because we no longer have a variable to display. We have a local storage object to display. Okay, now it should work. But anyway, that's, that was a good, I didn't plan it, but it looked good. But uh, that was a good way then uh, to look at this, that uh, that's how you figure this out. What is my console saying? Hopefully it's giving me a, a syntax error to work with. If it's giving me no error, then okay, I've got to deal with it in, in what's my logic error. And I have to sort of work backwards. What was the last thing that I wrote? What was the second last thing I wrote? Oh, there's a misspelling there. I got into a good <laughs> What's that? Uh, I got into a doodle of asking, talking. Over and over? Yeah. Huh. That might mean that you don't have your, your prompt inside of the function. It's outside of the function. Okay, there we go. So that's the thing about JavaScript. Everything works, all your hundreds of lines of code work, and then you misspell one thing and all the rest of the lines deactivate. So hopefully that got it working now. Everyone on track there? Yeah. Question? Let me pull up my code right here. Thank you. 
Yes. Doing okay here? Do you need any help on that? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to set up my laptop, so I can think. Yeah, thanks. Question. Yes. Is that name stored on disk or just in memory? It's permanently being saved on disk. So it's not like in the memory card where we can actually easily go into a file and get it. And if we're loading it just on the web browser, it's being stored somewhere deep in the bowels of the web browser. So we can turn this app off and try it again. Or is it using the same page as it no? Almost. Almost. We need a little bit more to be to be sure that it's going to be close to the browser. Because that's not the cache. It probably has a very specific name. So if it works so far, it's working pretty well, but there are still some catches, some caveats, because um, right now my project here, it does show a name, and if I do, if I do, you know, if I go back to the home screen and I load the app again, it's still there. The name is still there. But if I force quit the app and load it, it's not going to be there anymore. Well, the data is still there. It's just that it doesn't know to display the data once the app loads. So my, my name is gone. The data is stored there. When you use local storage, the data is stored there. It just doesn't know to show it. So we need to do a little bit more here. We need to somehow, um, as soon as the app loads, have the app check. Does a username exist? If the username exists, show it. Well, there's two possibilities. The username does exist, or the username doesn't exist. So we have to deal with that possibility. If there is a username, show it. If there isn't a username, don't show anything, maybe? or some other result. So now this is where we're going to deal a little bit with this if-else stuff. Conditional statements. On the condition of something, do something. So uh, JavaScript and most programming languages have several ways to check for something. To check true or false, to check yes or no, to check if something exists or not, to check conditions. Most languages have this. One of the ways to do this is with an if-else statement. If this is true, do the following or else it's not true, so do the following. And you're not limited to just binary options, really, yes or no. You can also include if-else and else-ifs, which are try this, or this, or this, or this, and then other complex things like switches, and what else do we have? For loops, and all the classic ways to make decisions. We'll get to those. But for the moment, I want to check, um, is there a name? When I load my app for the first time, is there a name? No, so don't display anything. But subsequent times, today, tomorrow, next week, when I launch the app again, is there a name? Yes, display it. So the way we will do this is we will create a function. We've got a function that gets the name. We want a function to load the name. We want a function to check, is there a name to load? Um, in this case, notice the way we've been writing it is something triggers the function. We're going to do something slightly different. We still need to create a function though, so I'm going to go to create a brand new line 70. What about current on the device when it boots? 
are ready. Basically, we're going to do that, but we can't really do it to the low level of when the device boots. We're going to do that when the app boots. Well, that's what I meant, so yeah. the uh, on-device trade. That's basically, yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. We need something to trigger it to check, and basically on-device ready, because we're still in on the on-device ready. So we're on that track. We need a function here, so let's uh, write function. This is the built-in JavaScript keyword to create a function. And we will call this load name. Open close parentheses, open curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace. This is our function that will check. Does a name exist? If it does, show it on screen. If it doesn't, don't show anything. Load name. Inside the function, here's where we check. Uh, computers basically, when they check for logic, they're always checking for truth. Is the thing that I'm asking for true? Yes or no. Uh, if it is true, do a set of instructions. If it is false, do another set of instructions. Or check again. What about if this is true? Then check. Then do yes or do yes do, or do no. So that's what an if else statement is. Our basic skeleton of this code is if, open close parentheses, um, then uh, curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, space else, open curly brace, close curly brace. This is a very basic if-else skeleton. If something is true, the something will be defined here. If something is true, do the code in here. And this could be hundreds of lines of code. Or else this is not true, so do the else part. And this could be hundreds of lines of code. But that little construct right there can help us check if, like let's say you're playing a video game and you're building high score, that it's game over. This check high score function runs. If current score is more than previous score, display congratulations, or else it's not greater than, then display try again. That's what this is all about. If this, if this is true, do that, or else it's false, do that. And we're always checking for truth. Is the thing that we're trying to check, is it true? If it's not true, it's got to be false, and that's where else comes in. So what we're going to do here, let's say so we'll write inside the parentheses local storage dot username. We'll write equals equals quote end quote. No space between those quotes. If you put a space there, that's something else. I'll explain that, of course, in a moment. No spaces in the quotes. Several things are going on here. We have equals equals. These are two equal symbols, no space between them. We've seen like on line 66, username equals prompt. We've seen equals before basically means take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. That's the basic equal. When you have what's that? I suppose. I'll mention that in a moment. Um, equals equals is now actually checking is the thing on the right the same as the thing on the left so two equals is going to check is the thing on the right the same as the thing on the left single equals is going to put the thing on the right into the thing on the left and there is also the third triple equals which also checks is the thing on the right the same kind of object as the thing on the left so on the right I could have a number and I'm trying to put it into a variable that only holds letters that's when triple equals could work in this case I won't do that just yet because I've also got other checks that I'm going to do but uh, triple equals sometimes we, we use that when we want to check that two things are the same is the number one the same kind of thing as the number two sort of so don't worry about triple equals yet. I'm checking uh, when the app loads up. 
check if there's a local storage that is empty. One possible thing that could happen is that when the app loads up, it's going to check local storage username. It could be empty. Some uh, some uh, browsers or, or devices could mark local storage objects as empty, like that. So we're checking, is it empty? If it's empty, um, inside, if there's no name given yet, let's say, if there's no name given yet, then do the following. Uh, at the moment, nothing. Nothing will be displayed. It won't really do anything. And maybe just for the maybe just for the developer console.log local storage username dot username. I want to see. I thought there was a name there. Show it to me in the console. But here I'm first checking. If no name has been given yet, don't do anything. Or else a name has been given. Remember, it's either yes or no, true or false. If a name has been given, display it on screen. Just take line 68, copy it, and put it into line 75. That's the line that displays the name on screen. You worked before. Now here it's checking. If the name is empty, don't do anything. Or else the name must have something displayed. <coughs> But as we beta test this, and as I've taught this for, for several years now, and we beta test it, and, and I've said previously, uh, you know, you can't make anything foolproof because there's so many ingenious fools. As we beta tested this, we've seen, okay, sometimes this happens. Sometimes that happens. So this is not enough for us to check. Is the local storage object empty? We should also check it in these two other ways. I want to say, check it if it's this or this or this. I want to include multiple things to check for, not just for this kind of emptiness. We could have other kinds. So we'll do it like this. It'll look a little weird first, but put a parenthesis around local storage equals quotes. Put parentheses around this whole thing. So yes, we'll have double parentheses here and double parentheses there. And between the last two parentheses right there, add a space, and we will do the pipe character. Not a lot of us know pipe. Does anyone want know what the pipe character is on your keyboard? It, it's the vertical line, which is shift backslash. Two pipes, two shift backslashes. And backslashes are these right here. They lean back. These are forward slashes. Slashes, backslashes. Shift backslash, which is next to backspace. Two back shift backslash. Two pipes. That means or. Check if this is true, or this is true, or this is true. Check multiple things at once. Space. Another open and close parentheses. Because I'm kind of grouping these together, sort of like when you do math. 1 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4. There's an order of operations, but if I want to force the 2 times the 3 first, I put it in parentheses, and then it does the rest. So here, if I put these in parentheses, it will, it will check this and then check the OR. If you don't do that, it might get weird results. But in these parentheses, I will check for something very similar. Local storage dot username space equals equals and another thing that could happen is it could say no. null and we've seen that we have to put that in quotes <laughs> null is a thing that could happen the particular operating system could say that local storage is null instead of empty and we need to do <coughs> one more it could, the, the operating system could say the local storage is undefined, so we'll need another OR. Question? Is this case-sensitive in the system? 99% of the time, I think, especially with JavaScript, null is lowercase. I, other languages might have it different cases, but with JavaScript, I'm like 99% sure it's lowercase. 
but because we are checking it as a string, that does matter. Now, from our testing, I don't believe we need to... I, I, from the testing, I don't believe that is necessary, but to be triple safe, we could do quotes null and no quotes null. And then, of course, we can also do check type and all of that, but this seems to have worked on previous semesters, and we need to check one more or. So, same thing here, another pair of parentheses, but uh, after that pair there, the or, the or, um, what's that thing called officially? The or, what's on the deep level, what's or and 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 called? Anyone remember that? Or. What? Rajiv, what was that again? Uh, logical Something like that. Logical, uh, logical operators. I think that's the official name. Logical operators. <laughs> or logical operators. So uh, we need then another pair of parentheses. And we will check again. Local storage, but this time equal to undefined. And that one seems to be with no quotes. Local storage username equals equals. Don't forget the double equals. Single equals is take the thing on the right, put it into the thing to the left. Suddenly you have nulled out your, your 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 name. So that's undefined. No uh, no quotes on that. No quotes. Yeah, from the testing that we've done, and we might further find other errors and such, which we can add to our code. Beta testing. We've got a room full of beta testers. Undefined, lowercase. So this function here, its purpose is to check is there a valid name. If there isn't, do nothing. And maybe give me some console output what's wrong. If there is a name, I mean if it's sort of like a double negative, if there if no, there is no wrong name, then yes, there must be a name, so display it. You could kind of do it backwards. Doesn't matter the way we do it, but we're checking yes or no, basically, and do something about it. Yes? And on self mind, if you wanted to um, remind yourself what that variable that you're looking for is, if you put in the parentheses type of the storage.username equals on which On which line? On line 17. No, that's what that will do. It will show me, this is like get item, remember we've got set item, get item, if you just write it like that, it will get item and show me in the console what's in that variable right now. But will it tell you what you say you want it to look for? It will just either print the name or not print the name. If we're, in, if we're in this first section, it'll print whatever name is inside of username. Oh, okay, yes. Well, that would require something more like saying, you know, we actually rate, make it say here, local storage is currently this. So that way we can give ourselves some more meaningful console output. Yeah, because that's a good point there. This is just literally going to say a name or a blank or null or something. What does that mean? Well, if we preface it, preface it with a little bit of useful feedback for ourselves, that might be useful. So maybe let's fix our line like this. Don't forget this plus sign right there. We're going to have it say on in the console, local storage is currently space whatever that current local storage object is with that plus. Just like we put it in here. Make an empty space and then display the name. Here I'm making this message and then display what's in the username. Local storage object. Now this is a nice function, and in theory it should work, but actually it won't work yet. Anyone see why? Possibly. Based on what we did up here. We haven't called it. We haven't triggered it yet. We haven't tripped it. We haven't invoked it yet. We invoked, we triggered get name by a button click. We haven't invoked load name anyway. We've defined it, but we haven't used it. Okay, easy. Line 78. 
load name. <laughs> Run it. When device is ready, because all of this is in on device ready, when all of the Cordova code is ready, do load name, which jumps back here, checks for the name, and then displays it. Okay, to fully test this, I think we really need to do it either in a virtual device or a real device. The browser might not fully work, so I'm going to go with my uh, real device for the moment. Yes? Would you want to put home name if it is empty? So if the storage is empty, and you want to call get name, the prompt user to put a name. Sure, but at the moment we've got it that someone has to go to the About screen to, to add their name. Oh, I see. Okay. So we, we could do it that way, but um, yeah, there's sure that, that would work. It's just that in this particular case, I'm uh, not displaying anything, but that would make sense, yeah. All right, so I'm going to run this on my device. Again, this will work best on a device or virtual. I'll test it on a browser in a moment. The way to fully test this is uh, it might even just work as soon as you load it because it should already have a local storage objects saved uh, without you having to type anything and then it'll see this new code and then it'll see load name so it'll go back look for a name and display it so it should probably show your name automatically we'll see in a moment on the browser it may or may not just because those are created and destroyed um, per session I think so just uh, check that The way to test it also is you type in a name, you see your name, quit the app, force quit the app. That's what I did. It went back in and still there. It was still there, great. So you want to force quit the app to make sure it clears it from the memory and then it should still be there. Let me load up mine here. Nope, at the moment it's local. The first time you do it, it is, it is, um, it does have to download stuff the first time. You might, you might see some feedback there that it is going off to the main uh, node repository and such. But subsequent times it's because it has to recompile your code. And um, on mine, I'm also running a bunch of things. I'm running my recorder and a bunch of things, and so mine's just slower. Now, this is the first time that I run mine with all of this local storage code. I haven't been running it on my device yet. Look at my output. Cordova is ready. Local storage is currently undefined. I have not added a name at all. This is the first time I run this device with this latest code. So it's seeing that currently local storage is undefined. So I see nothing on screen right there. I'm going to go over to the about screen and I'm going to customize and I'm going to put in a name. I just put in a name. So, okay, it's got a name. It's seeing a name. I'm going to uh, exit the, the app. And I will completely shut it down from my memory of my device. See, it disappeared there. It doesn't see the app at all anymore. I'm going to launch it from my app screen. It's launching my device. Eventually it sees the app. Inspect. Welcome Vic. Are we starting my phone in the Restarted your phone and it's still there. Yeah. So fully, fully testing it. So there we go. Saving permanent data 
to the device. This might be enough for you to make your, your amazing app that saves some kinds of data, like let's say, you know, you've got, let's say, a, a food a nutrition app where you're saving what are you eating every day. You could be using local stores to save that kind of data, you know, numbers and uh, words and, and all of that stuff, checking your, checking your mileage that you've driven every day. You can, uh, once you learn about, you know, other user input and such, you can save that to local storage objects and retrieve them and they're permanent. There's still the catch that they are permanent to this device. So if you go into your app drawer and you go in and tap and hold and delete your app, you deleted your weeks of data, your months, your years of data. If you delete the app, you've deleted everything about it. That's why the, the operating system kind of warns you oftentimes also, you're about to delete Instagram. Are you sure you're going to lose your data? Now, Instagram is different because all your data is in being saved to the inter Instagram servers. That's how you have the true data permanence. We're not going to quite get to any of that yet because that requires a huge infrastructure of having a server. How many of you have a server? Okay, me too, in my closet. So, yes. so we have a question about that. So could I put a trigger in there so that when the person is within Wi-Fi, then it will send the data on the local storage to the server? Yeah. We can, we can definitely transfer this data off to, you know, some server storage. Uh, that's another kettle of fish, but definitely we can do that. So uh, uh, mine worked at least. Uh, hopefully yours did. Let's take a, one more break. I'm going to put my, code, my latest code in the network folder at this point. When we come back, we'll do a little bit more polish on this, and then talk about some other stuff. Um, it's 8.27. We'll be back at 8.37.